Looking to start a career in cybersecurity? Then you've come to the right place. Secure Ninja. A few years ago, Secure Ninja TV asked several cybersecurity experts for advice on getting started in the industry, and it quickly became our most popular video ever. We thought an update was in order, so here is some new advice from more amazing cybersecurity professionals at DEF CON 24. Enjoy and leave us a comment below if you have anything to add. Well, first of all, I would tell anybody interested in being in cybersecurity, please do it. We have a massive shortage of people today. And the thing is, there's a lot of great entry-level opportunities at companies where they're really are looking for someone who's just curious, who's got maybe some pattern recognition capabilities, who's got maybe a modest technical background. But the key is once you start that role, be curious. That is the most important advice I can give to anybody. If you start off as a tier one analyst somewhere, take some time to learn what the tier two guys are doing. Study every incident, go home at night, read books, read blogs, follow the people who are in the field, and I guarantee you that in no time you'll be advanced. In fact, I talked to a customer of ours just yesterday night at dinner, and that's a strategy he uses for his, his team. He tells them, you know what? I want you to, you know, at some point be a very successful person in this field. I want you to build a career out of it. And the only way you can do that, it's up to you. And if you can take the time and learn from what you have and be curious, you'll go really far in this field. I think there's a couple of different kinds of people that go into cybersecurity. Uh, there's the folks that really kind of set out from the beginning to be in this field. I, I don't know how much advice I have for somebody who already knows they want to do it. For somebody who doesn't know whether they want to do it, I, I think maybe I think of being a hacker as a little bit like being a boxer. I mean, I, I could be out there getting into fights, but instead I can take what I know and apply it in this really interesting way, in in a competitive and brilliant way where people get a chance to really enjoy what what we all as a community get to do. So yeah, instead of kind of the street version of it, you get to take it and, and channel it into something that is really helpful to a lot of people. I think one of the main things that you have to have if you want to get into uh, information security field is a passion for it. It's like a lot of people see this opportunity now in the career and there's like zero unemployment now. Uh, it's uh, all on the media that you hear about it. And they're thinking, oh, I can make money at this. This is a good job. And then they burn out. It's like if you don't have a passion to try to get involved in this and try to learn more and constantly be on your toes, constantly learning new techniques and new threats that are out there and how to fix them, you're going to fail. It's like it's just as simple because the guy that you're fighting, the criminals that you're fighting, they're having a blast. They love this. They're doing this for fun and profit. So you have to have that same kind of passion and zeal to learn about it, to try to protect people and to protect companies that they have on trying to steal from them. So I think that if you're going to do anything, you have to want to learn and always keep learning. It's like to be good in this field. What sort of advice would you give someone looking to get into a career in cybersecurity? The best advice I can give is to go out there and experiment, right? The people that are interested in cybersecurity are typically going to be the people that want to tinker with technology, figure out how it works. So we always encourage them to make your own technology do things that you wouldn't expect it to do. Interested in cybersecurity, get some VMs on your own laptop and try and break into them and defend against them. Go on the web and find some tools and run those tools and learn how they work. So there's so much that you can do just from a self-learning perspective that I always encourage that as the first step. Uh, so for me, cybersecurity began by, interestingly enough, I was a computer science major as an undergraduate, had a math background as well, and I got interested in cryptography. And cryptography is sort of this basic building block in many ways within cybersecurity. And so I started off, I ended up going to graduate school, studying crypto in detail, and right after I graduated, I had a bit of an existential crisis in that I realized that even though cryptography was this fundamental building block, even though it was mathematically interesting, it's not how people were breaking into systems. The reality is that most people were finding ways to bypass crypto through things like phishing messages and very simple mechanisms. And so I realized that if I really wanted to make a difference in this field, I had to expand my horizons and learn about a lot more than just crypto. But crypto was my start. I also spent a lot of time, you know, when I was younger, hacking through Unix systems and Linux systems, basically trying to see what I could get access to. So the traditional mechanism of just being curious and building upon that curiosity over time is how I got started. And it's been a fun ride ever since. I think that um, generally you, you will need eventually, depending on what level you get to, uh, a CISSP because folks will dismiss you if you don't have that in certain large organizations. And it's not, it's not right, but that's what happens. In terms of other educational backgrounds, obviously it's more so whatever you're passionate about. If you're driving towards, uh, you know, cybersecurity itself has become such a wide angle of, of, of fields that, 
you know, I, I work with a psychologist who also hacks wireless. Would you expect that? No. Uh, you, I, I think that it's really about what you're passionate about and what you can use as an analogous um, framework for you to uh, you know, move forward and progress within your cybersecurity career. I always tell people that when you're starting to get out, it's like paper is good. It's like uh, I would not have gotten where I was without a CISSP. It's like, but after you get that and you get through HR with it, you then have to prove yourself. Do not rely on just having a piece of paper saying, this is why you should hire me. Be able to uh, learn from those courses. Don't just take a course to get the certification. Take the course to learn from it. It's like, so I always say, it's like, get that learning from it. Because once you've gotten that job, you're not going to have to like, you have three months, usually, that you have to prove that you deserved that job. So I think cybersecurity certifications are helpful for some people and are able to kind of get a piece of paper that explains that they have a certain credential and they're able to use that to get a job. I don't think it's really necessary specifically in terms of the skills that you need, but I think it's always helpful to have for being able to potentially get your foot in the door and a key job opportunity. But more important than that is that you keep learning because that's what your employer is going to look for and they're going to want to see that everywhere. It's good to look out on paper because if you're doing things like um, if you're doing things like uh, consulting, uh, it's always a paper trail. And if you lost your job, it kind of helps you get into the next place. So like uh, as far as uh, security shirts go, uh, usually for beginners, you know, having things like the Security Plus is, you know, a good place to start. And I, I've heard that it's like a requirement for the DOD personnel. And then as you pr uh, progress through the ranks, having a, you know, medium, le uh, medium level of people should have like a CISSP at least. I don't think a degree or certification is required. I think that they're good in that they help establish a baseline, right? So if you're in a college course and you're taking cybersecurity classes and there's some great programs out there, that is great. And the certifications certainly help establish a baseline for expertise that we can use to kind of level set across industry. So I always encourage people to pick ones that are important to them or meet their interest area. Is it ethical hacking? Is it incident response? Is it security program management? And find something that aligns with that and go and get the certification. The field is changing so fast that if you're not always trying to learn, you're going to fall behind. So spend time looking at some of the key bloggers in the field, read some of the research reports they put out, look at the threat analysis. If you go to the Black Hat bookstore, you can find a ton of interesting books. Spend some time reading and I think you can quickly come up to speed on all the relevant skills. But the beauty of this field is it's so new, anybody's got a chance to come into it and learn it really well. The truth is, is that to really do well in this field, what you need is just curiosity. The Hacker's Manifesto says, yes, I am a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. If you're curious, that's the education that you're going to get yourself no matter what. Thank you for joining us for our Cybersecurity Careers video version two. Do us a favor and leave us a comment below if you have any additional advice for someone looking to get into a career in cybersecurity. It could really be helping someone out. And if you haven't subscribed to Secure Ninja TV, click the red subscription button below so you don't miss any of our future videos. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.